This is my first time. So. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. It's my first time. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this together. You can do it. Yeah. I'll be giving you time. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> We're ready to go. Are we on screen or is it just, um, is it just, uh, are you just doing, you, do you I, want I, us to paint it? Yeah, actually, because I, this is yeah, all I got. Cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, okay, so I just go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Um, um, I guess, uh, my first question is that um, I know that you worked with uh, Rin and Stimpy, and uh, that yeah, was like going, and definitely, um, I want to know is like, definitely, is there, um, from going from the movies from, or, you know, TV to going to big budget digital, you know, is it, uh, there really a difference? No, I think I came. I came into animation at a time when traditional animation was still being done and yeah, hand drawn. Exactly. And, and also, right on the cusp of the digital age, where computer animation was going. And mm -hmm. for me, it was a great vantage point to see like computers were really aiming towards realistic. And you know, you see it in a lot of movies yeah. now. And to me, I always loved that part of animation. When I was a kid, animation took you to a magical place. Yeah. And so to me, Boss Baby was a, a, a great, uh, perfect film to like, let's go back and do like an old movie like when we were kids and, and, and bring back the magic and step into a world of color and design and art. And so really, um, for me, it's that long standing goal of like going back to what I really loved, which was more artistically driven as opposed mm -hmm. to realistic. Yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> uh, there, uh, I want to, uh, that you did with, uh, there is a new change in more adult uh, uh, cartoons, you know, with the new movie, The uh, Sausage Party came oh, out. Yeah. yeah. Our good friend And, it's uh, like, and you have a movie. PG rating, which is very different from, you know, the usual cartoons. And I said, is that a new movement of more adult, you know, the cartoons being more inclined for adults? I think like there's always been Ramsey has worked on quite a few yeah. uh, kind of edgier films. In I worked yeah. on South Park. Yeah, I worked <laughs> many many moons ago on a TV show called Duck Man. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> but I, I think that yeah. there is a there is a desire like there's a want and a desire and a need for adult animated films, um, and I think that um, you know, but I do feel like it's a it's a limited audience, and with with the family I, films, it's this. It, hey, it went off. Maybe you should go again. Yeah, it was just a yeah, car alarm in there. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't even hear that. I could just do it for you. And, and, <laughs> and. But uh, no, I think that there is definitely a need and a, and a want for, for adult, more adult-minded rated R animated films. Mm -hmm. I think the appeal for family films are broader. There's a much bigger audience. So that's why we see more of them. Um, yeah. And we wanted to do a movie that wasn't just for little kids. It's also for the parents, too, yeah. and they can enjoy the movie together. We also w w worked with Ralph Bakshi, who in the time was doing edgier, uh, which inspired Sausage Party, by the way. Yeah. And he gave me my first job in animation. That's right. And actually got to hire his grandson, Miles Bakshi, to play the voice of the kid in the movie. Oh, wow. So it's again a very small world of yeah. animation. But it's a great medium, and it's, it, it's not a... a Sorry, the car alarm. Uh, uh, animation is, you know, uh, is really just a medium, and it can have different mm -hmm. genres. You know, you can have a Lego Movie, and you can have Sausage Party, and you can have The Boss Baby, and um, and uh, sorry, that car alarm is sorry me. Go ahead. But, but another small world aspect to Miles Bakshi is that Miles also has to be my best friend's son and my son's best friend. So it just, you know, it's, it's a small world yeah. of animation. Um, <clears throat> is, uh, there is definitely, um, a, a, a sort of feel to the movie and, uh, the nostalgic feel and it's, it was that very intentional? Yeah, you know, we, we didn't want it to be now, you know, and we wanted to do a film that's more of a period piece of an amalgam of the 60s, 70s and 80s before there was all this you know, I, uh, you know, cell phones and, and digital pads, and it's when kids use their imagination. It was very important to the story that, you know, we're, we're nostalgic about this period where 
kids went out and played and their heads weren't buried in all this technology and, and so we actually went out to you know our favorite toys growing up and, and licensed them for the movie and so I think if you if you're a parent you'll you'll see a lot of your own childhood mm -hmm. in the movie and I think it's a romantic time um, we're trying to celebrate yeah I think a really special aspect of Tim Templeton's character is his wild imagination. Mm -hmm. And he is in a time when there's no, he's growing up in a time when there's no cell phones or iPads or video games. So that's all, just like us, that's all he has to rely on to entertain himself. And, you know, um, I think for, you know, for me, his character represents, you know, the power of childhood and the power of fantasizing. And, it, and, and that's very relatable for kids, but also a great awakening for, for parents and adults. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, was Alec Baldwin the first choice? He was the first and only choice. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, we were still developing the script, and it's just, you know, Alec first came to mind. Having worked with him on Madagascar 2, yeah. of course, just know how funny he is. And we did a test with a, a baby from another movie, Megamind, mine, and put a, 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 some dialogue from 30 Rock with Alec, uh, and that was the calling card to the movie, and it, that was the, the pitch. All we had to do was show this little clip, cute baby with Alec's voice coming out, and everyone was sold. Including and, Alec. And it was our great fortune <laughs> that uh, Alec did it, because there was no one else. There was yeah. no backup. Yeah. And, and Alec is like, we know him, and he's the hardest working man in show business. So I mean, incredible. And he's so, so talented, powerful. but he, he just poured himself into this. He, he did the most recording sessions of anyone on any animated movie I've ever done. Like 300. <laughs> 300, <laughs> yeah. And um, you know, the, the hard part for me was just being in the room with him and making sure I didn't laugh and blow his takes. Yeah. You know? And I think a really interesting fact about Alec is that when we started this film, like you know, a little more than three years ago, he had one child. And over the course of the film, he had three more children. So he had a lot to draw from in terms of his own children and reliving the experience perhaps he had when he was a kid because he's one of four brothers. I think so. Yeah, so. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, for thank doing you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So nice talking to you. Oh, Watch you. your head. Oh. Nice to meet you.